Mr. Suleiman, good afternoon to you. Do appreciate the time. I'm going to get to the work that you've been doing in a moment, the demand, the, uh, the, desire, the need for help there. But first, you would have heard Zipa Kema reporting on what the Minister of Social Development, Lindiwe Zulu, said today, suggesting that organizations, I think she did mention yours by name, are getting ahead of government. How do you see it? I got afternoon, Stephen. Government doesn't understand three words. Urgency, emergency, and disaster. If people have to wait for government, it'll be four days, they'll be without food. And we've seen that many times happen before. The social development has failed the, the, the community hopelessly. In many of the fires we've been to, people are waiting for food, and if, if we had not come, they would have been waiting three days or longer to get food. The Premier himself mentioned two days ago that he needs to, I can't understand why social development and SASA is not on the ground. We actually were called by government, not by anybody else. Yes, the community leaders called us, but the mayor, Kolani Pagati, called us, deputy mayor, uh, the Princess Faku called us, the MEC of Lakokta, the Minister of Human Settlements called us, the Premier himself called us, and, and several organs within government asked for our assistance because they know, you know, we, we move at speed. So uh, government, yes, we, we work with government structures. That's a fact. But you can't be waiting four days to respond to people who are in dire need. For today, today actually we are late, to be honest. While speaking to you, my teams found an area that nobody had reached yet. Those people haven't eaten for days. And they found a family, thanks to disaster management who came with us, they found a family where the mother and father both were dro drowned in the water, and they found six children alone but no food for the past few days. And they found several families. It's, it's another area. It's called uh, Cambridge. And in addition to that, they found another area 20 kilometers away. So the extent of this flood is huge. And government needs support, all the support it can get from NGOs, from business, from anybody else. And in disaster, it's called disaster because it needs an urgent response. It can't be something that we elective and you can respond five days later. You have to be on the ground fast because people are distraught. They're in anxiety. They don't know what to do. They've lost their homes. They've lost their food. They've lost family members. And there's a 15th member that's lost now. Just a few hours ago, when my teams were there, another person was found in the river, a lady was found in the river. So the numbers are climbing. And this kind of thing cannot be delayed. You have to be on the spot immediately. So, I mean, Dr. Suleiman, you, you're talking about, I mean, you're painting a very bleak picture there. The kind of help that people need, they need food, they need clothes, they need a place to sleep. They also need a longer-term intervention. I mean, they're living, in some cases, on a floodplain. Yes, we've also made it very clear, you know, to the Minister of Human Settlements, you know, and, well, the MEC, I and mean, the, the Minister of Human Settlement says she'll be on site soon. We've got a good relationship with her. But it's the same story over and over again. You need to look at two factors. One is, in terms of preventing disasters, the sanitation in the areas around those informal settlements. If, you know, there is poor sanitation or poor uh, drainage, you get overflow of water. And when that happens, we, it shouldn't be happening. You, only, you don't have to have a disaster if you prevented that. And secondly, people build on floodplains. Look, you're not going to take away the idea of people living in formal settlements. That's not going to happen in the next t t couple of decades unless you can solve the problem with proper housing and being fast enough. So people will keep building informal houses. What you should do is preempt it and say, okay, you're welcome to build informal houses, but you shouldn't build here, there, on servitudes, on floodplains, and, and other, other areas. Because they will have the flood, they will build there, they'll, they'll get washed away, and they'll go back exactly to the same place again what happens in, 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 in the Yaxke River, in Alex, and other places in the country. So yes, they need to be moved from there, but un unless there's a long-term plan to rehouse all over the country, we're going to keep having informal settlements. Um, we're also looking at a situation, frankly, Dr. Silman, I'm afraid to say we've had huge rains because of the La Nina effect. I mean, that's literally related to what the temperature of the Pacific was several months ago. That's what leads to these kind of weather patterns. Because of climate change, we're going to see a lot more floods. We need to do a, not, a lot more long-term planning as a country, as government, and I'm afraid as organizations like yours, we all need to do a lot more long-term planning for disasters like this. And as, they, as you say, that we require urgent responses as part of that planning. Yes, definitely. You know, and we, we plan for that all the time, Stephen. We know we can have disasters happen at short notice. You need to be, have your teams ready. You need to improve your logistics, your capacity, and what to store. We are always in December. Before we closed down, you know, uh, for, we shut down on the 15th. We bought mattresses, blankets, and food items. We stored it because, you know, every year there's either fires in Cape Town or there's some rain issue or some storm somewhere in KZN or some part of the country. So every year and as part of the year, we are always stockpiled and ready. And even though we are closed officially, 
our staff are not closed. They are on standby to work during the holidays to respond immediately and, and respond. So government can do the same thing, you know, and, and of course they've got bigger resources, bigger warehouse capacity, they've got a disaster management team, they've got people paid for disasters throughout the country, they've got municipalities, you've got human settlements as part of it. You have so many different structures of government. The problem is all the structures don't work in unison. Everybody is, you don't have one coordinated disaster structure. It's COCTA is involved, human settlement involved, social development is involved, municipalities involved, disaster management is involved. You can't function in a disaster in so many di different divisions. You need one structure that can run through the whole process rapidly, efficiently, and decisively. Dr. Intia Suleiman, thank you very much indeed. Founder of the organization Gift of the Givers, do appreciate the time.